This is a free sample of the book, Don't Be Sympathetic, by Cairo Copeland. The first half of this book is posted right here on YouTube, free for everyone to listen to. If you like this content and want to hear or read the rest, or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash simp. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and audible at reinventideal.com slash simp. Chapter 1. How Simping Will Ruin Your Life, Even If You Don't Do It. What happens if simping continues? Many simps don't believe they even have a problem. They even write articles that say, simp is just a word that misogynists use to describe men who respect women. Or they get their female allies to write an article that says, the term simp is being used to shame men who treat women well and it needs to stop. Son, not only do you have a problem, but you are making it my problem. What the simps are doing is they are overinflating a woman's perception of her sexual market value. As a result, the women of today's world are behaving horribly when it comes to how they treat men. Simps were once isolated to a small minority. They were often guys that were the product of a divorce where the mother won full custody or were just raised by a single mother. But now, because of the blue pill conditioning on an international scale, the majority of males are simps by default due to how they were raised. It should be highlighted that women themselves do not like simps. They don't respect them, value their opinions, form romantic relationships with them, and they definitely do not have sex with simps. They either are completely disgusted by them, feel sorry for them, or outright exploit them. But they have no desire to be with a simp. Yet despite the overwhelming evidence that simping does not work, many males continue to do it and justify why they do it. As a result, women have all the power in today's dating environment, but they exercise it without responsibility. This power was given to them by a growing population of simps that so easily throw themselves at women's feet for the hope of romance and sex. It's safe to say that a woman with a Facebook, Instagram, Tinder, and Bumble profile is offered sex by males 1,000 times per month. This is how and why the simping problem has become a problem for non-simps. Because of their repulsive behavior, more males are living sexless lives. In 2008, the number of sexually inactive males age 18 to 30 was just 10% of the demographic. In 2018, it's 28%. Females only find 20% of men above average. 80% are rated below average in attraction. Much of that is not a matter of beauty standards or fitness, but rather behavior. A male's behaviors are primarily what a female's attraction and arousal triggers evaluate. Since the behavior of most males is simpish, the women find few men they like and respect. And because the simps worship women so eagerly and effortlessly, these women have grown accustomed to the privilege of being worshipped. It has never been easier for an even moderately cute girl to make money in today's world with OnlyFans, many vids, Patreon, and Premium Snap. The lesson that these women are learning is that they should expect to be paid just for existing, and any man wanting anything more meaningful with them than a sexy photo better bring a lot more to the table than just the monthly subscription fee. A woman is not interested in the majority of the males who offer her romance and sex, and that's her prerogative. It used to be a 50-50 chance that she'd like you or not like you. But now, because 80% of those offers are from simps, rejection has become a natural reflex for her and otherwise quality males lost in the shuffle suffer rejection because of it. Imagine the effect this has on the present-day woman's mentality. Reverse the roles. Suppose you were offered sex from 1,000 women a month. What would that do to your personality and the way you treat them? You'd probably have an overinflated ego and false perception of your sex appeal. You'd believe you deserve the submissive respect of all women just because you exist. You might even flake on several dates, canceling them at the last minute because you're uncertain that you're getting the best woman you could possibly have. Because you have so many options at your disposal, if one of them didn't behave exactly as you pleased, you'd get douchey with them. Instead of communicating with them precisely what you'd want, you'd expect them to read your mind and treat you precisely how you wish. If they didn't, 
you'd have no hesitation about dropping them because there were plenty of other options for you. You might even ghost on them without a trace. You might be extra moody and emotionally dependent on maintaining the level of attention. If you got less female attention one weekend than the last, you might throw a hissy fit and demand the universe fix this injustice. To be even more difficult, because you've been on so many dates, you'd get bored really fast with the usual pleasantries and initial conversations. This would turn you into a rude jerk that got bored with a woman that wouldn't perform tricks like a dancing monkey to entertain you, and didn't have interesting stories from an interesting life to share with you, or didn't make you laugh to alleviate the mundane. You'd become addicted to experiencing something new and fresh, rather than something stable and reliable. You'd chase excitement, while stomping on the hearts of human beings, not even realizing you were doing it, because your attention span and depth of thought were no greater than that of a toddler. This is what today's sexual and dating marketplace is like. The only difference is that women have the power just described, and the men suffer from their lack of power and understanding of how to successfully navigate this market. This is the dating environment that every single male, simp or not, must face, thanks to the behavior of the simps. 24% of women admit to ghosting. 49% of women say they occasionally cancel at the last minute. The behavior of single women in the dating market has become so bad that even bisexual women complain about it. There has been a 68% increase in male virginity from 2002 to 2015. Most of those male virgins are simps that are sealing their own doom when it comes to their sex life. But their simping has a larger effect on the male-female relationship as a whole. At first, it was just their problem, but now they are making it every other male's problem. Why simps must be stopped. It is becoming a problem for all men now, not just the simps, because the simps have given women the idea that they can walk all over us. Because the simps have grown out of control into an astronomical number, many women have come to believe that all men are like that. A simp treats all women like queens, therefore a woman treats a simp like a slave. Women in general, believing all men are like this, now believe they can treat all men like slaves. If a pretty good-looking guy is not taught the correct way to interact with women, which most guys are not in this day and age, and if instead he simps for them, the women he interacts with will assume that all good-looking guys should treat them like goddesses from heaven and bow to their will. The problem here is that one guy that does not get it is making it difficult for the guys that do get it. Because women want a man that just gets it. Meaning, they do not want a guy that has to be told how to get the girl, particularly by them. He already knows how to do that instinctually. When pickup artistry first became publicized, what really disgusted women was not the manipulation tactics, but rather the idea that some guys had to be taught how to interact with them instead of just getting it. Simps clearly do not get it, and that is why they simp. But with so many of them showing their lack of getting it worldwide, it sends a message to all women that most men are pathetic and willing to do anything to please them. Here's how I know it's really bad. A while back, I was on Instagram. I no longer use social media, and hopefully after reading this book, you'll understand why. But back then, if you saw my profile, you'd see pictures of me with several beautiful women out doing fun things. It sent a message that I was a man with a high sexual market value that other women wanted to get with. But even with all these pictures and social proof, one woman expected me to simp. One of my female followers sent me a message asking me if I would subscribe to her OnlyFans account. I had never talked to this woman before, but she was bold enough to send this as a first message to me, probably because she had sent it as a first message to other guys on Instagram and was met with positive reactions to it. Even with all the social proof on my profile that I have no need nor time for looking at OnlyFans trash, she still thought I would subscribe. Women now think that even high sexual market value men are willing to foot the bill for their lives and pay them just for existing. That is the attitude that women worldwide will have as a result of the simps. They think they should be paid just to exist, and you are privileged to ever be graced with their presence. Because they all believe themselves to be so high value despite doing nothing but posting provocative pictures to make themselves appear valuable, they live under the presumption 
that they are the masters all males must bend the knee for and do their bidding. This woman that messaged me was probably a 6 out of 10 at best, but because so many simps had showered her with free validation, attention, and OnlyFans subscriptions, she thought she was higher value than me and that I should pay for her existence. Imagine what a guy would have to do in order to actually get a date with said woman. A synonymous occurrence of what happened to me that happens to many other guys is getting messaged on a dating app, a social network, or kick by a femdom or a self-proclaimed mistress. She demands you call her mistress and refers to you as slave. She also demands you send her money just because she's your master and you're her slave. The only reason something like this exists is because there are guys that are pathetic enough and so thirsty for female attention and connection to go along with it. This has to be stopped. If you think the dating scene is difficult now, it's about to get a lot more difficult for all single men when all women think they are this valuable. I've probably said this a thousand times before on my podcast and YouTube channel. Men are the prize in any romantic pursuit, not women. The reason I say this is because men bring more to the table and what they can bring can actually be measured. What men provide are things like a home, a vehicle, income, assets, financial security, vacations, retirement plans, education, and expense coverage for children. And all these things are 100% measurable. But what does she bring? Well, she provides love, loyalty, trust, respect, sex. But none of these things are measurable. Thus, she will often say she's giving her best effort in all these things. And there's no way for you to argue that she's not because they can't be quantified. But perhaps the greatest sin in all of this is if you start to come up deficient in the things you bring to the relationship, you'll hear about it. And this isn't just some boys rule, girls drool bullshit that we all should have grown out of in the fifth grade. But do you know who's really treating it that way? Women. Despite this clear comparison that proves men are the prize, women still believe they are more valuable and can push men around like they're personal slaves. That's not an attack on women. It's an attack on the simps that are giving women this much power. I do not begrudge the queen of fools, rather the fools that made her queen. What the world needs now is a sexual market correction. And that is where reInvent Ideal, my company, comes in. Reinvent ideal means changing the ideal standard for what an enjoyable life as a male actually is. In doing so, changing the life conditions for men set by the world, making it more favorable for the male experience in the sexual marketplace where women reign supreme currently. Reinventing ourselves as men is our best hope for reclaiming our previously held dominance of the dating environment. The world paints a picture of the ideal male life as a man who's a model citizen, a committed careerist moving up the corporate ladder through loyalty and conformity, actively involved in his community by coaching Little League or serving others in some way, goes to church on Sundays or some other religious service, marries a woman and stays married to her for the rest of his life, and raises on average 2.5 kids together. The only other thing they need is a house with a white picket fence. Social imperatives tell us that if we pursue this kind of life, we will be happy once we've reached it. But the truth is that there is no man more miserable than this one described. He's very jaded from his job upon finding out that corporate America is loaded with nepotism and political correctness that views him unfavorably just for being male. They dangle myths of opportunity in front of him to keep him as a loyal worker bee, but have no intention of investing in his growth. His once attractive wife has now cut her hair, packed on extra pounds, and blames it on the kids. She nags him about everything, forces him to do the household labor while she does none of her own, while constantly telling him that he's useless. This woman is no longer pleasant to look at, nor be around, and the kids are nothing but costly idlers, indoctrinated by the media to believe their father is a moron, unworthy of respect, crippled by the education industry to become failures in life having to rebound to their parents for financial support well into adulthood. This man never realizes his dreams, never gets to retire, never travels the world, never makes out with a foreign beauty, and has nothing to show for his life of work. He continues on at a job he hates to pay for his wife's demands and his kids' failures. The only happiness in his life comes from a bottle, a cigarette, a TV show, or a porn site. That is the kind of life that simping will create for you.
But a reinvented man's life is different. Instead of getting married early and supplementing to a woman's needs, he decides to temporarily check out of the sexual marketplace, forgetting that women even exist, so he is no longer distracted by them as he works on bettering his own life. He chases success instead of women. Instead of a job, this man owns his own business where he's the boss. His work is location independent, and the schedule is set only by him. The work is meaningful to him, and the only limit on his earning potential is the limit he chooses to acknowledge. Instead of serving his community full of people he doesn't relate to at all and doesn't even like, he builds his own community and social circle of other men he admires and benefits him by being part of his life. Rather than pissing away thousands of dollars on engagement rings and wedding expenses, he puts his money to work for him, for his future financial freedom, to the point where the remainder of his life is already paid for and can be lived without consequence. While most men his age wish they still had the body they had in their 20s and reminisce about it like a long-distant memory, this man has an even better physique and hits the gym hard every day to maintain it. Then by age 36, the age he typically reaches his peak sexual appeal to women, he may decide to re-enter the sexual marketplace if he wants to, but this time he dominates it. Women are now the ones chasing him. They fight each other over him. Some may even choose to share him as they'd rather share a quality man than have a dedicated simp. Instead of nagging him and holding him emotionally hostage, they behave pleasantly around him. This man is the life of the party wherever he goes, the one that always gets the invite, the one that can even get a party going on a short notice, the one you want planning your bachelor party or birthday. If every man could do this to just temporarily check out of the dating scene, to spend that time working on and reinventing themselves, upon their return, the sexual marketplace will be corrected. He becomes the Chad that women love, the Kevin from sales they fall for. Instead of the simp they make rules for, he's the pimp they break rules for. It is imperative that all men do this, not just the simps, but especially the simps. If we continue to live in a world where women believe they can walk all over us and demand anything they want, then even the males that have the balls to stand up to them are in for a world of pain. You will see an increase in the Me Too cries and claims, as women will be so used to male submission that they'll come to expect it and anything different will be viewed as harassment. Further, a world with a greater sensitive reflex to blurt out harassment claims will lead to more god-awful, unbearable sexual harassment seminars all working men will be forced to sit through. If not for yourself, do better for your fellow man. But what if a sexual market correction never occurs? A legitimate question, my friend, deserving a legitimate answer. It is quite possible that this ideal utopia that plays out in my head, where most men check out of the dating scene to work on themselves, then return to desperate and thirsty women who beg them for attention, may never play out. But let's face it, some guys will refuse all the way to the grave to give up their simping ways. But who cares? In the end, when you've reinvented yourself, you've built a far more enjoyable life for yourself that is independent of women and really anything. What do you need them for? The answer is you don't. You are not reinventing yourself for women. You are doing it for you. You are not chasing excellence and success instead of women to one day get with women. You are doing it for you. Because like I said, you are the prize, even unto yourself. Okay, okay, now, for those that really, really want a woman, there's good news for you in all of this as well. Women's innate mating strategy and their own biological nature is in your favor. The way they make their decisions about which man to pursue and be with is based on a little concept known as hypergamy. It is the desire to be with the best possible man they can attain. The deep yearning to have the most high quality and high value man there is. They love to one-up their girlfriends more than they loved just being with that guy. So when you work on improving and reinventing yourself, you are using a woman's hypergamy to your advantage. The things that make you more appealing to women are things that will make you a better human overall. But before you can use women's hypergamy against them, you must master the skill of keeping them from using your biology against you. That skill is sexual intelligence, and that is the subject of this book. When you simp, you are showing a lack of sexual intelligence and broadcasting to the world that you are a slave to your biological impulses. It shows incompetency. If you've read my first book, 
never ghosted again. One of the big concepts in that book is that you must never let a woman know you're in emotional pain. You must not be vulnerable with her and show her a sad, grieving, frustrated, or hurt side of you. That means do not cry in front of her. Do not get angry and lose your shit. Being emotionally vulnerable with her is interpreted by her as you being incompetent. The same can also be said in the case when you are simping, when you allow a woman to manipulate you with the possibility of sex with her, when you shower her with free validation and attention, and when you pay her just for existing, she views you as incompetent. This character defect is only corrected by sexual intelligence. Continue reading to make this skill your second nature. Now, perhaps you are familiar with the terms alpha and beta when it comes to categorizing and classifying different males. Those terms are very widely used in the Red Pill Consortium. They are also one of the few subjects where I part ways with my Red Pill brothers, because the alpha-beta male dichotomy is utter bullshit. While the dichotomy is true of wild animals, we humans are far more complex. Yet there are many podcasts and blogs and channels and books that promote the idea of becoming more alpha as the correct path for all males to have a more pleasant life. It's bro science. Nothing more than astrology for men. But there is a replacement for it that is quite similar to the alpha-beta dichotomy. In today's world, there are simps and there are pimps. The simps are the guys that just don't get it, but the pimps do. The simps have no sexual intelligence, but the pimps do. The simps chase women, the pimps choose. However, one is not condemned for the rest of their lives to the designation they were born into or conditioned to adopt. A simp can become a pimp through proper behavior modifications that are outlined in the 12-step program of this book. Shall we begin?